Welcome, friends, to Boiler Room Detective Channel, where I share my knowledge and experience troubleshooting boiler issues. Please consider liking and subscribing to the channel if you find these videos helpful. Today, I'm discussing how an emergency shutoff switch can be life saving. Just after midnight, the smoke alarm in the boiler room sounded in the elementary school. The fire department responded quickly. When the firefighters arrived at the boiler room, they opened the door cautiously. The firefighters reported that they were greeted with wet, white smoke. Using their infrared camera, they found the source of the white, wet smoke was a cast iron boiler. The firefighters used their metal saws to cut the boiler jacket to gain access to the flame. They trained their hose on the hot boiler and opened the valve. One firefighter shut off the main gas valve, fitting the building. When the fire was out, they discovered the boiler sections were cracked on the boiler. They were lucky as spraying cold water on a boiler usually results in an explosion. This one didn't. As a result of the accident, the students were bused to other schools for the rest of the winter, and the boiler could not be repaired. The cost to replace the boiler would be close to $100,000. If the boiler room had an emergency shutoff switch at the entrance, the boilers could have been shut off, cooled, and the problem diagnosed. It would have been safer for the firefighters also. The emergency door switch is required if your state follows ASME CSD1 code. Even if your locality does not follow the code, it's a great idea and makes the boiler room much safer. The CSD1 code requires a switch at every exit to the boiler room. Imagine one of your boilers starts running loud. The pop safety valve opens and fills the room with steam. Steam displaces oxygen, so you would have a difficult time breathing. This would affect your cognitive ability. In addition, there would be no visibility. Essentially, you would be going blind through the boiler room, trying to find out how to shut off the boiler. With the door switch, you could shut off the boiler remotely, investigate the cause after the steam clears. I like using emergency shutoff switch when I'm doing boiler maintenance. I shut off the boilers until I verify the boiler room is safe. In another building, we were called about a new boiler system that we sold. The owner said the boilers kept shutting off. When we arrived, the boilers worked great. We could not replicate the issue. As we were leaving the boiler room, I saw the emergency shutoff switch in the hall outside. I watched the students walking by and pressing the emergency stop button. I relayed what I discovered, and the school electrician relocated the switch just inside the boiler room door. The boilers never failed again after doing that. On another project, the custodian would turn off the light switches when leaving the boiler room. The installer used an emergency shutoff switch that looked like a light switch. As a result, the boilers were turned off with the lights. To avoid being mistaken for a light switch, the installer had to change it to a push button switch. I disagreed with a newer boiler inspector when the CSD1 code was first adopted in my state. He misunderstood the meeting and demanded that the line voltage to the boiler had to be routed through the emergency door switch. I tried to explain that it did not have to be line voltage, but could be control voltage with a relay. I took him down to the boiler and showed him all the safety controls were low voltage. He reluctantly agreed after speaking with his supervisor. One of the boiler representatives in our area likes using emergency break glass stations. I'm not a big fan as it only has one use and the glass has to be replaced. The boiler inspectors like being able to test the door switches during their boiler inspection, so I prefer the push button switches. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com is focused on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. It includes a monthly blog about steam issues inside a brewery. My other site is fireiceheat.com. It's my company's website and shows some of our capabilities. I've authored 12 boiler books, which are available on Amazon. 
My technical articles are included in these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I'll see you on the next case.